It has been a turbulent day in the NFL. Five coaches in the last 24 hours have lost their jobs. Rob Chudzinski in Cleveland, Leslie Frazier, Minnesota, Mike Shanahan, D.C., Greg Schiano with the Bucks, and Jim Schwartz most recently with the Lions. We bring back our NFL analyst, Damian Woody. Uh, so we got six openings if you toss in the Texans' job to add to those other five. At this point right now, what's the, the most attractive job for a prospective NBA, uh, NFL head coach? I would have to say the Lions. And you look at the Lions, the first thing you got to look at is ownership. They have the, the, the Ford family. They're very patient. They're, they're, gonna, they're willing that's to... That's a good thing for a that's coach. That's very good right? for a coach. You want, you wanna, you want ownership that's going to hang with you even through some tough times. Then when you get down to the personnel on the roster, obviously a couple things you look at, quarterback. They have a guy in Matthew Stafford who regressed, but you still have to say is one is a you know part upper echelon yep. co quarterbacks in the National Football League. Obviously, we know about Megatron. They got guys on the defensive side of the football that can get after the opposing quarterbacks. So when you look at the, the total package, that, that should be pretty attractive for a lot of potential uh, potential candidates coming in. Yeah, you got to beat it like a uh, half a century of bad history there yeah. in Detroit. That's <laughs> yeah. the only thing you got going against you. That's well, actually, right. We're going to get into that in our centerpiece next segment. Uh, you played for the Jets. Rex mm -hmm. Ryan did retain his job. He will be the Jets head coach next year. And the Jets owner, Woody Johnson, with a flair for the dramatic, made the announcement in the locker room in Miami after the Jets beat the Dolphins. I'm so proud of you, whether you won this game or not. You gave it everything you had every play, and you play hard for this coach. That's why I've elected to, to keep Rex and Rex. We know what we're capable of doing, right? And we know where we're going. You know who wears all those traits on his sleeve for everyone to see every single day? This man right here. Yeah. John Dizik, the GM, giving his coach a hug. There were some questions whether Rex would be back or not. As I said, you played for Rex Ryan, and you played for him with the Jets. What, what stood out to you about that, that moment there? Well, anybody who knows Rex Ryan knows that he's an emotional guy. He, he really is. He, he's not afraid to show his emotions you know, to, to the you know, people in the organization, to the players, or anyone. Uh, the one thing that really stands about Rex Ryan, he is a loyal guy. He's one of those guys. He's going to stand behind you 100%. He's going to be honest with you, and as a player, that's all you can ask for from your coach, a guy who's going to be behind you 100% and who's, who's going to get in the trenches with you. That's why guys fight for Rex Ryan. That's why guys love to play for Rex Ryan. When I was there, loved the guy because he, he gave me new life at the end of my career, and, I, I, you know, for me, I'm eternally thankful for that. And you got the feeling just how popular he was with his players, mm -hmm. and Woody Johnson obviously must know this because you're not going to make that announcement unless you're, you're pretty sure that you're going to get a good reception, and, I mean, they're, they're chest chest bumping him and high-fiving him. They were really excited that Rex is coming back. Oh, there's no question. The one thing that Rex has done with the, with the Jets organization, he's given them an identity. Before he got there, the Jets were kind of squandering. They were kind of out there. When he got there, he gave them identity, and that's all because of Rex Ryan. Jets don't make the playoffs 8-8, eight and eight, but they do it with a rookie quarterback. Some felt they overachieved this season with Rex at the helm. Which team that didn't make this postseason is set up best for next season? You know, we talked about a Detroit situation, but I'm going to go with the Houston Texans. And when you look at the Houston Texans, we all know about the quarterback issue. But if you look at the rest of their roster, they, are, they have some studs all across the board on that roster. They have good offensive line. They got two stud wide receivers. We know that Aaron Foster finished the season on IR. He should be back. You know, Ben Taser is a free agent. Defensive side of the football, they have playmakers on that side of the football as well. As well. They play in the AFC South. Yep. And when you look at the AFC South, really the only team that you have to contend with right now is the Indianapolis Colts. I don't think by any means of the imagination anybody thinks of Indianapolis as a powerhouse. Clearly they got Andrew Luck as a quarterback who's, who's trending upward. But that's a division that's winnable. You saw the problem at the quarterback position with the weapons that they have. This team could get right back into the mix next year like Kansas City did this past yeah, year. It only, it only takes one year off, and Texans right. are looking good. Rams get two of the top 13 picks, and they get Sam Bradford back. They finish 7-9. and nine. A lot to, to talk about for next year, but we're still focused on this year, <laughs> coaching carousel and the playoffs here on SportsCenter with Damian Woody. You know, what is not to love about Wild Card Weekend in the AFC and NFC coming up? Let's start your week-long preparation right now with this. The Chiefs and Colts kick Wild Card Weekend off Saturday. Kansas City has lost seven straight playoff games, believe it or not. Saints visit the Eagles. That's the nightcap. 
New Orleans will try to get its first ever playoff win on the road. The Bengals host the Chargers Sunday afternoon. Cincinnati is looking for its first playoff victory since 1990. And the Niners and Packers wrap up the weekend. What a goodie. San Francisco has never won a playoff game at Lambeau Field. Back to join us.